Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering any question or challenge you have related to electrical and life safety. And we're going to use NFPA Link to do it. Easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards. Today, we've been asked to cover the important points of bathroom electrical wiring using the 2023 National Electrical Code. Let's get started. So from the desktop and link, I'm going to navigate to the 2023 National Electrical Code. And now we know we want to deal with bathrooms. So I want to use the search feature in link to just search up the term bathroom. And as we look at this, we can see that the bullet point over here shows that we're searching the 2023 uh, NFPA 70, which is the National Electrical Code. And the term bathroom throughout the code pops up here. And what I want to look at first is the definition of bathroom. So if we go to the definition of bathroom in Article 100, it's defined as an area including a sink with one or more of the following. So the, the base level, it needs to have a sink in it, and then it has to have one or more of the following either a toilet, a urinal, a tub, a shower, a bidet, or similar plumbing fixtures. So that's what's, what's going to be defined based on the National Electrical Code as a bathroom. If we go back to the search section, you can see that now it's selected with the bullet point over here, it's selected just within Article 100. So to go back and grab those other sections, I wanna grab all of NFPA 70 2023. And we'll see that we have all the sections that were there before. So just looking through this search area, we get a lot of information about bathrooms. So first of all, we had the definition that we just went through. Then moving on, we have in 23070A2, the service disconnecting means shall not be installed in bathrooms. So the overall main disconnect for the home uh, it cannot be installed in the bathroom. So that means an electrical panel is not going to be installed in the bathroom. And we'll follow that up here in this next section that says uh, 24024E says overcurrent protective devices other than supplementary overcurrent protection shall not be installed in bathrooms, showering facilities, or locker rooms with showering facilities. So when we start getting into commercial applications where we have locker rooms, maybe in a gym, the locker room that has showers uh, within it, you cannot have uh, electrical panels or overcurrent devices of any type, circuit breakers, things of that nature, in those areas. Um, 550 goes into mobile and manufactured home specifics uh, for bathrooms, um, but 21052D gives us a base rule, um, and it says that at least one receptacle outlet must be installed in bathrooms within three feet of the outside edge of each sink. 21011C3 moves into bathroom branch circuits. So where the 20 amp uh, circuit supplies a single bathroom, outlets for other equipment within the same bathroom shall be permitted to be supplied in accordance with 210.23B1 and two. So I wanna jump into that section real quick to take a look at a little more of the information that they're giving us there. And as we navigate over to that section, we're dealing specifically in this case with dwelling units. So when we're talking dwelling unit bathrooms, in addition to the number of branch circuits required by other parts of this section, one or more 20 amp branch circuits shall be provided to supply bathroom receptacle outlets required by 21052D. So we looked at that 21052D, that's where it said we had to have at least one receptacle within three feet of the outside edge of the sink basin. Um, so with that, this is stating that we have to have a 20 amp branch circuit to supply that outlet, okay? Such circuits shall have no other outlets. However, what we were just looking at in the search section is this exception. So the exception reads, where the 20 amp circuit supplies a single bathroom, outlets for other equipment 
within the same bathroom shall be permitted to be supplied in accordance with 21023B1 and B2. Okay, so that 20 amp circuit, if it's just feeding one single bathroom, uh, you have some options to install some other items on it as long as it's within accordance with 21023B1 and B2. Um, so B1 gives you some information about uh, not exceeding 80% of the, the branch circuit rating. Um, so it, another uh, good thing we can um, do in link here is use direct to see what we have uh, as far as bathroom requirements. So if we go over here to direct and select, we've got two different bathrooms here. So we've got a residential bathroom and we've got some different uh, hot spots located around here. So we've got a light fixture here that's one, looks like a uh, bath exhaust fan for two, a vanity light for uh, six, five is plugs, four is, appears to be a jacuzzi tub, and then three looks like it's a thermostat maybe for this tile heat here. Um, so there's quite a few requirements in here uh, that go into, and for example, here's the uh, branch circuit requirements that we were just discussing. In 21011C3, we've got one or more 20 amp branch circuits should be required. Um, one branch circuit is permitted to supply all bathroom receptacles within the residence, but in the case, it must not serve any other load. So if we've got uh, that one circuit we're talking about, and we've got a, say, a bathroom on the first floor and a bathroom on the second floor, and we're going to use that one 20 amp branch circuit to feed both of those uh, bathroom outlets, that's fine. Uh, but in that case, you can't serve any other loads uh, that were listed in that exception to 21011C3. Okay, so only if that circuit feeds just a single bathroom is it permitted to utilize that exception. So that gives us kind of a little bit of an overview of bathroom electrical wiring requirements. Uh, we hope that answered a lot of your questions around that topic. Be sure to visit nfpa.org forward slash link and give link a try if you haven't already. As you can see, Link is truly a window to productivity.